Imagine stepping into a spacecraft and within just a few hours, visiting an alien planet on the other side of the galaxy, with the same ease we board a flight to another country today. That's exactly what warp drives like the ones shown in sci-fi franchises such as Star Trek and Star Wars promise unimaginable speeds that make the vast distances of the universe practically irrelevant. The Starship Enterprise, for example, reaches speeds equivalent to 9,000 times the speed of light, and the legendary Millennium Falcon goes even further, 9 million times faster than light. Now, when we compare that with our real-world technology, the contrast is staggering. Juno, one of the fastest spacecraft ever built, travels at around 74 kilometers per second, equivalent to just 0.002% of the speed of light. Still, that's incredibly fast by our standards. But even at that speed, it would take about 20,000 years to reach our neighboring star, Proxima Centauri. Now, imagine if we had a working warp drive. A round-trip journey there could take just nine hours. And as incredible as that may sound, this isn't just Hollywood fiction. Science, contrary to what many people think, doesn't strictly forbid faster-than-light travel, at least not in the way we typically understand it. There's a theoretical loophole, and it might surprise you. In 1994, a Mexican physicist named Miguel Alcubierre, who happens to be a Star Trek fan, proposed a revolutionary concept. Still a PhD student at the time, he published a paper demonstrating that by manipulating Einstein's equations of general relativity, it would be possible to create a warp drive. The foundation of his idea lies in the core of Einstein's theory, which describes gravity as the curvature of space-time. Alcubierre wasn't trying to break any laws. Quite the opposite. He simply reconfigured the equations to create a different geometry around a spacecraft. The result? A valid mathematical solution capable of simulating a moving bubble of space. Think of it like a surfboard riding a wave. The spacecraft itself wouldn't move through space. It's the space around it that would shift, carrying the ship along. This cleverly bypasses the famous speed of light limit, since that limit only applies to objects moving through space, not to space itself in motion. And this idea isn't just theoretical. We have real examples in the universe where space seems to move faster than light. For instance, in extremely distant regions at the edge of the observable universe, there are galaxies receding from us at faster than light speeds. This doesn't violate any laws because it's space itself expanding, not the objects within it. Similarly, Inside the event horizon of a black hole, space behaves in a comparable way. So yes, space can move faster than light, and this is something we've actually observed. In Alcubierre's model, to create this bubble that distorts space around the ship, you'd need an absurd amount of energy. But not just any kind of energy, it would require something physicists call negative energy or exotic matter. This matter would have a radical property, negative gravity. But there's a big catch. This negative matter is purely theoretical. It has never been detected, and we don't even know if it can really exist. Don't confuse it with antimatter. Antimatter has properties similar to regular matter, just with opposite charges, but it still has positive gravity. Negative matter would be something entirely new, with characteristics we don't even know are possible today. For example, imagine an object with negative mass of 1 kilogram. In theory, it would exert force in the opposite direction of what we expect. It's a strange, almost paradoxical concept. And even if such a thing were possible, there would still be major challenges. Physicists Bobrick and Martyr dove even deeper into the concept of warp propulsion and discovered that even if we had the exact amount of negative matter needed, it wouldn't make the spacecraft move on its own. You'd still need some energy source to push that bubble of space forward. In other words, the bubble could exist, but you'd still have to give it that initial kick. It's somewhat similar to how traditional rockets work. The gases are expelled backward, propelling the spacecraft forward. But in the case of the warp drive, the push would be used to move the space bubble, not the ship itself. Theoretically, the moment you activate the warp drive, space ahead of the spacecraft would contract while space behind it expands. This process would form a kind of moving bubble of space. Inside that bubble, everything remains calm and untouched. No need to accelerate to extreme speeds. From the crew's perspective, the trip would feel like coasting gently through space. But from an outside point of view, the bubble would be flying at a speed faster than light. And here's a key point. This idea doesn't break the laws of physics because the spacecraft itself never actually moves faster than light. It's the bubble of space that moves. The ship is essentially standing still in a wave of warped space-time. Now, here's where things get even more fascinating and a little more complicated. If warp travel were possible, it wouldn't just allow us to go faster than light. It could also lead to a very strange situation. Time travel. According to some studies, particularly a paper published by physicist Alan Everett, 
If you had two warp bubbles traveling in opposite directions at near light speeds, the difference in time between the two could create a closed time loop. This means, in theory, that you could go back in time. While this sounds exciting and extremely useful in science fiction, it raises serious concerns in physics, like the famous grandfather paradox, where someone goes back in time and accidentally prevents their own existence. Because of these bizarre possibilities, many scientists believe that if warp drives do become possible one day, nature itself might find a way to prevent time travel, perhaps by making it physically impossible to stabilize two bubbles moving in opposite directions. Another critical issue is the tremendous energy requirement. Early calculations suggested that to move a spacecraft with warp drive, you'd need more energy than the total mass of the planet Jupiter converted into negative matter. But later revisions, like those by physicist Harold White at NASA's Eagleworks Laboratory, drastically reduced that number. By modifying the shape of the space bubble, making it more donut-shaped rather than spherical, he estimated that the energy requirement could drop by several orders of magnitude, possibly to the mass equivalent of a small spacecraft. In 2021, researchers actually created a theoretical model of a warp bubble that didn't require any negative mass at all. It was the first time a warp drive was proposed using only positive energy, still theoretical, but a big shift from previous assumptions. That model, created by physicist Eric Lentz, used a new mathematical approach called solitons, stable waves that can move without changing shape. In this idea, the soliton would carry the spacecraft through space, like a calm wave carrying a surfer. Again, this is all purely theoretical, but it opens up new doors for future exploration. It's important to note that all these ideas, while fascinating, still exist in the realm of mathematical possibilities. They haven't been tested in practice. We don't have the technology, materials, or understanding of how to build a warp drive. But as history has shown, what starts as theory can sometimes become reality. Think about the idea of black holes. Decades ago, they were just theoretical predictions from Einstein's equations, strange solutions to complicated math. Today, we've actually observed black holes and even captured an image of one. So just because we can't build something now, doesn't mean it will forever be impossible. But we have to be honest. Even if the warp drive becomes technically feasible, we'd still face enormous engineering challenges. One of the biggest concerns is what might happen in front of the bubble during its journey. As the bubble moves, it could accumulate particles, energy, and radiation in the space ahead of it. When the bubble finally stops, or decelerates, all that stored energy might be released in one go, potentially producing a deadly burst of radiation. In a worst-case scenario, the destination planet might receive a wave of destructive energy before the spacecraft even arrives. That's why some scientists believe we'd need extremely precise control systems to manage the bubble's structure and avoid catastrophic accidents. There's also the issue of navigation. In a warp bubble, you're essentially cut off from the outside universe. You can't receive signals, see where you're going, or interact with the environment outside the bubble. It would be like piloting a ship with the windows closed and all communication off. So, we'd need to figure out how to control and guide the bubble without relying on traditional sensors. Even if these hurdles are overcome, there's still the question of why we should pursue this type of technology. Faster than light travel sounds incredible, but it also poses risks, not just physical or technological, but also philosophical and ethical. What would it mean for humanity to suddenly have the ability to reach other star systems in a matter of hours? How would we deal with first contact? What kind of responsibilities would we have in exploring new worlds? Despite all the open questions, the idea of warp drive continues to inspire scientists, engineers, and space enthusiasts around the world. It represents the ultimate expression of our desire to explore, to push the limits, and to not accept that the stars are forever out of reach. It may take decades, centuries, or even longer, but just like flight, electricity, and space travel once seemed like impossible dreams, faster than light travel might one day leave the realm of fiction and become part of our reality. Until then, we keep imagining, researching, and dreaming. Because every great leap in human history began with a single idea that challenged what we thought was possible. And what about you? Had you heard about all these studies that could one day take humanity beyond the solar system? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps keep this project going and motivates us to keep bringing content like this, where science, curiosity, and that spark of fiction come together to inspire us to look up at the stars. Share this with someone who also dreams of traveling among the stars. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.